Welcome, everyone. I hope you are doing good. My name is Bart Wondermate, and I'm your mentor for this project. Today, we're going to learn trading styles, and I will help you to choose a style which is relevant for you. But before starting, I need to explain you why I'm wasting your time with these lectures, okay? Look, you need to know trading styles in order to understand what indicators, what analysis, what time frames you need to choose in your further trading process to make it correct. And without understanding it, uh, like trading process will be really messy. That's why you need to learn these styles, choose a relevant one for you, and only after that start analysis and training process. And as always, today I will give you the main part. After that, I'm going to do a real-time uh, analysis of American uh, U.S. stock market. And by the end of today's lecture, I will give you about 10 minutes uh, to answer your questions. Okay, you can ask me whatever you want. So without further ado, let's get started. From previous lecture, we know that retailers are divided into four main types. So these are trading styles. There are scalpers, day traders, swing traders, and long-term traders or investors. But also remember that sometimes we call long-term traders as positional traders, okay? And today, I will delve into each trading style, will describe the details, advantages, and disadvantages of each style. And by the end of this lecture, you will understand what is more than less good for you and what is generally bad. And finally, I will also recommend you what exactly to choose. So we're starting with scalping. So scalping is characterized by a lightning fast pace in which trades are made within a few seconds or minutes. In simple words, it is a trading style when each trade is happening in a couple of seconds or in a couple of minutes, okay? Next, scalpers' profit is on a high trading frequency because each trade is happening for a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes. And in that couple of seconds or minutes, there are extremely low chances that price can move significantly. So, for example, price is on, let's say, $50 level, okay? Let me throw that for you, $50 level. After trade, uh, it's moving to $50.75. So, yeah, like after the entire trade, okay? So, Scalper did analysis, enter the market and uh, exit the market. So, he's exiting like maybe here, okay? And this is $50, all right. And when I told you, I already forgot, $50.75, yeah, 50.75. So from this trade, Scalper gained the 75 cents, not even just $1, even less, okay? Because one more time, when you're choosing a scalping, so let's say to choose one minute time frame so you can see scalping is using from one minute to five minutes sometimes 30 or 15 seconds time frame so here we go like let me correct the chart so let's say that i entered for short positional training from this level so i did analysis and entered for short uh and maybe yeah i exit exited my position like here so I entered the level, let me, by the way, delete these drawings, choose this one. Uh, yeah, here we go, short conditional trading. So I'm entering from this level, okay, in my take probably this year. So my entry point is 18,693 and 21, and my profit is on 80,685. So in just one trade, okay, we got about a little bit less than $10, a little bit less. And that's a good example. In most of cases, it's a dollar and a couple of dollars, okay? So for each trade, they are gaining a couple of dollars or maybe $10. They are not gaining hundreds or thousands of dollars. And that's why uh, they are gaining their good profits with high-frequency trading. What is high-frequency trading? So they are trading a lot in one trading session, okay? 
So for each trade, scalpers gain a dollar or even less. Yes, sometimes it can be more than one dollar, maybe five, ten, but it's a rare thing in scalping. And to make good profits, scalpers are doing a lot of trades per day, usually more than 100 ter um, yeah, trades. Okay, next. Scalpers are usually using from one minute to 15 minute time frames, but sometimes they can even use a lower time frame, like 30 or 15 seconds time frames. So you already know what is a time frame, but I just in case I will show you. So time frame, it is a terminology in trading that is showing us time period. So whenever I'm choosing one minute time frame, it's showing me price movements in one minute. Okay, so each this candlestick, it's showing me price movement in one minute. So if I will choose 10 minutes, now, yeah, thank you for advertising. Here we go. Now I'm choosing 15 minute time frames. And in this situation, uh, every single candlestick is showing me the price changes in 15 minutes. Okay. So you can choose one hour, one day, whatever you want. This is what we call a time frame. So scalpers are using from one minute to 15 minutes, okay? Sometimes they can even use seconds, okay? Here we go. So now you know the general uh, description of scalping. Let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of scalping. So let's start with advantages or in other words, pros. The first advantage is a shorter risk exposure. So scalpers are holding positions for extremely short time. That's why risks are minimal. Why, you may ask me? Because price can't move from $20 to $10 just in a couple of minutes or seconds. It will be hard for the price, and it requires time for that movement, about hour or maybe a couple of hours, okay? Or at least, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So you're holding, you as a scalper, you're holding for a minute or even for seconds. And in that minutes and seconds, the only thing that price can do is to move for cents or for a dollar, okay? So for example, you enter, uh, your entry point is on $7 level, okay? Stop loss will be, let's say, yeah, here based on some market structure. You will learn that in future lectures. Don't worry, okay? So your stop loss is here. Uh, let's say we have, and then this type of structure, so this is your entry. Uh, your stop loss is based on this support zone, okay? So here we go. And let's say this stop loss order is on the $6.38. Here we go, $0.38. Cents. So you are losing just less than $1 due structure from short time periods. You're automatically reducing risks of losing, okay? Because, yeah, you put your stop loss normally because of this market structure, but it is too small, okay? So from 7 to 6.38 cents. It's even less than $1. So let me try to bring for you a good example. Let's switch from NASDAQ, maybe Tesla stock, to Tesla stock. Yeah. And I will show you a good example. So let's say you enter the market for long positional trading. So here we go. Let me choose that tool, long positional trading. Let's say we enter based on this support zone, and this is our entry zone, okay? And let me, for you, draw that support zone. So this one is our technical support zone. Yeah, this one is fake out. You will learn that in future, don't worry. So. What I can see, your entry point is on $175, where you will put your stop loss. Your stop loss will be based on market structure, so based on our support zone. You put it here, and you can see your entry point is on 175.43. Your stop loss is on 172. So you're just risking how much? You're risking about $3, and that's really good. So, so your risk exposure is really uh, short because you're holding for a couple of minutes or seconds on lower time frames. And on lower time frames, the price is moving in not really wide ranges, okay? Here we go. So, yeah. 
uh, yes, still there are some high volatile assets, such as cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. If I will choose for you, maybe I don't know that BTS to US BTS him BTC to USDT. You can see like the price is sixty nine thousand six hundred ninety three. Just a couple of seconds. Wait for that. Now it's eighty seven. Couple of seconds. Eighty four. Seventy two. Boom, 37. So you can see how significantly price is uh, being changed, okay? Uh, yeah, just in five seconds, price can fall for $200 or even rise for $300. But in scalping, we mostly take assets with low or average level of volatility. So do scalping with uh, Bitcoin is not a really good idea, but still, yeah, you can do that if you want. So, yeah, by the way, about... Um, this high volatility, we are going to talk just a little bit later. So the first advantage is that we have shorter risk exposure. Why? Let's conclude, because we're using lower time frames and holding for a couple of seconds or minutes. So in that couple of minutes, price can significantly go against our predictions. The next advantage is a low volatility. So yeah, on lower time frames, price movement usually moves in one direction and in small ranges and will uh, with less fluctuations. Yes, still fluctuation and high volatility exist, but really rarely. And this is another advantage because it reduces risks. The third advantage is increased profit potential with small spreads. But first of all, you need to understand what is a spread. I told you about it on the previous session, uh, I mean previous lecture, but I will repeat it one more time. So spread, it is the difference between buying price and selling price. So for example, you bought a um, yeah, plane. So this is our plane. You bought that for, I don't know, let's say 90, million dollars. Here we go. Like I'm sorry, using that for your purposes or making business with that, you decided that you want to sell that and you're kind of selling that for, I don't know, 90, one million and three hundred dollars. So you're finding a good, yeah. So ninety one three hundred and the year we have K. So it's ninety one million and three hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, you're finding a good buyer and you're selling that. So what will be your spread here? The spread will be one million and three hundred thousand dollars okay this is your spread you bought like the difference between buying price and selling price okay i hope you understand that and the spread from this deal will be one million and three hundred so the three hundred thousand so in scalping small spread is a strong requirement for financial instrument why you will understand a little bit later okay just focus that's like small spread it is just requirements that you need to have. If you can't keep that, you're not scalping. So, and small spread is giving an increased profit potential. How? Because, look, uh, what do you think? What's easier for price to reach? Uh, $98 from $50 or $52 from $50? So let me draw for you to make it easier. So what is easier to reach uh, from $50? $98, by the way, that's great eight. Or it's easier to, or price, to reach from $50, $52. What is easier in your opinion? Of course, 52 from 50. So that's why you have increased profit potential with small spreads. So when you have a big spread like here, your spread in this deal will be $48, okay? So you bought for $50, you sold that for 98, your profit is 48, so it's a big spread. But here, when you have a small spread, your potential for profits are higher because for price, it's easier to reach some price points, okay? Uh, that are closer to buying price. 
Here we go. Now let's talk about these advantages of scalping. The first one is market dependency on spread and liquidity. So I told you already that it's a strong requirement that in scalping your financial instrument uh, price performance need to be in a way that you will have you, you you will have a small spreads. So look, why it's important? You all understand right now. Look, lower transaction costs due this to small spreads allowing scalpers to engage in more trades without being significantly burdened by fees. So we already know that for each trade, traders are paying fees to their brokers. Some brokers are offering fixed dollar fee, but a lot of brokers are taking percentage from your gain as a fee. So if you gained $10 from one trade, you pay, let's say, 0.5% to your broker. And whenever you have a small spread, it means that you have small gains. So you're paying smaller fees, like a couple of cents, okay? Because your spread is not that high. If your profit is high, your fee is automatic automatically getting higher. And remember that from each trade, scalpers are gaining tiny profits. And generally, to make good money from that tiny profits, they make a lot of trades per day. And can you imagine paying high fees for 100 trades per day? Each part of scalper's profit will be eaten by fees of broker. That's why a low spread is a really important for scalpers. But why this requirement is a disadvantage, you may ask me. Look, because scalpers can trade only with financial instruments that keep this requirement. So a lot of profitable instruments are becoming unavailable because of not keeping that requirement, okay? That's why it's a disadvantage. Next disadvantage is executing speed and technology. So scalpers are required to have fast internet connection, advanced platforms, and skills to do fast analysis. But why? Remember I told you that scalpers are using one minute, five minutes uh, time frames, or even 30 seconds and 50 uh, seconds, okay, 15 seconds time frame. So can you imagine, like, can you understand that in that 50 or 30 seconds, or even in one minute, like here, uh, scalpers need to do a really fast analysis to enter and execute the trade. So if they have a slow internet connection, that will be a problem for them. Why? Because whenever they will wait until internet connection is loading the charts, they will lose the good positions. The next thing that scalpers are required to have is advanced platforms. They can't do scalping with regular platform. They need to have a specific platforms that allows them to trade in scalping uh, style. Because here I'm talking with you, another candlestick is now formed. So you can't spend time on a low, uh, slow internet connection or uh, through a platform that is not for scalping. Because there is no time, you need to do fast analysis, understand what is happening, and boom, enter the market, okay? So uh, I will bring you for you a good example. You cannot race in Formula One with a Mercedes because sports cars are used in these races. So Mercedes is a great car with high quality, in my opinion, but it's not good for Formula One racing. And the same thing is here. There are a lot of good platforms, but they are not good for scalping. And also... Uh, well, besides execution speed in case of uh, internet connection and platforms, um, skills to do fast analysis is really important. So if scalpers has a fast internet connection and a vast platform, but their analysis speed is too slow, they will lose a lot of opportunities. They ha have about a couple of seconds or minutes to, dare, uh, to do their analysis before price will start to move. And that's not really enough your kind of intention. That's why it's a disadvantage. Next disadvantage is a requirement of strong mindset and high concentration. Like you have just a couple of seconds or minutes to do analysis. There was a high tension, as I told you. You need to combine a lot of tools, do analysis, find confirmations, find entry point, put take profit and stop loss orders and execute the trade. And the whole this requires a strong mindset because everything uh, for everything you have limited time, just a couple of minutes or seconds. So if you feel that you're betting high concentration and with strong mindset, please do not choose scalping. It's not for you, okay? Choose another trading style.
The next disadvantage is limited time. So in day trading or in swing trading, traders have an hour, couple of hours, or even entire day to understand what's happening and what to do. That's enough. But in scalping, traders have a couple of seconds or minutes. It's not enough for detailed analysis. Okay. So now you know what is a scalping and its advantages and disadvantages. Let's move on to day trading and talk about it. So like day trading involves holding positions, I mean trades, for a signal trading day. And remember that the trading day is not 24 hours. It's from six to seven hours, okay? And traders like capitalizing on intraday price movements, aiming for quick profits in that one trading day. So in day trading, traders are using from five minutes to four hour time frame. okay? So you can see here, like, yeah, started from five minutes up to four hour time frame, four hours time frame. It is for um, day traders. Four hour and one hour time frame is for main analysis and 15 minute and five minute time frames are for entry and exit point determination. You will understand that in our future lectures, so don't worry about that, okay? Look, day traders are executing from two to five trades per day. Yes, still traders can do 10 trades per day, but experience, my experience and experience of other traders says that uh, usually they are losing control over each trade. So controlling two, five trades is okay. But when they are trying to control more than five trades, it's getting harder. So they are doing from two to five trades. They are using from four, five minute to four hour time frames, And their holding is one trading day, which is from six to seven hours. So that was a general uh, description. Now let's talk about these advantages and advantages. And the very first advantage is a lower risk exposure compared to swing trading. Why? Because there is no overnight holding of positions which mitigates risk. So let me explain you uh, what is the overnight holding, okay? Look, in swing trading, traders holding their positions for a couple of days. And it means that they are keeping open their positions at night. So for example, opening 1 p.m. on Monday and closing 11 a.m. on Friday. So for almost five entire 24 hours, the position is opened. When they are slipping or out of trading process, they can't control the risks. Unfortunately, we're not uh, yeah, magicians, we can't do that. So for example, if there are negative events like earthquake, wars, crises, regulations, or news market can fall because of them, okay? Yeah, stock market is closed at the night, if you think about stock market, but it's fixing all that events. And when market will be opened at the morning, price can hit stop loss level and close positions in the loss, okay? So and also, don't forget about other markets that are working at night as well. So stop loss level can be triggered at night too. But in day trading, traders can control positions and risks because it's from six to seven hours and they are catching every updates in market. It's like full-time job. They are doing analysis, executing trades, doing analysis, executing trades, reading news, doing analysis, etc. Okay, so we have lower risk exposure. The next advantage is the patient is that is the patient is less important in day trading. Look, in swing trading or in investing, traders need to wait for a couple of weeks, months, or even years. In day trading, traders are opening positions and closing them after a couple of hours. So they don't need to wait for days, or weeks, or months to see what's happening. The next advantage is that traders can catch everything. So day traders are online for wall trading process and they are controlling absolutely everything. And whenever something happens, negative or positive news, they are getting really fast feedback from, more, from the market. So something bad is happening, price is falling down. Something good is happening, the price is rising. So they are catching every movement, every news. And because of this, they have a high control over the market. And that's a really good advantage in my opinion. The next advantage is a high profit because of more frequency. But you may say that, you know, man, like scalpers are doing 100 and even more trades. Like scalpers are doing more than 100 trades because their profits are tiny. But in day trading, traders are doing two, five trades per day. So per week, it's about 25 trades. And that 25 trades brings high profits, not tiny, not average as in scalping. So that's why day traders have higher profits 
although they make fewer trades than scalpers. And that's really great in my opinion. The next advantage is fast taking of profits. So it's like a full-time job when you're receiving salary every day after work. Same is here. So you are starting to, do, to, to trade at morning, closing positions at evening, and taking profits of that day if you have them. First, yeah, if you lose, yeah, unfortunately, that's sad. And in the, in the evening, when you make a profit, you can go grocery shopping, maybe relax at a party, buy a gift for your mom, for your girlfriend, or from your boy for your boyfriend. And that's really cool, in my opinion. So you're doing job, you're getting salary, okay? Now let's talk about, yeah, and yeah, and the last one I forgot to list, it's a fast taking of profits. You already know about that. Now let's talk about and these advantages in day trading, okay? And the first and the most important, in my opinion, is that day trading requires more screen time. So look, traders are holding two to five positions from six to seven hours, and it takes time to do in-depth analysis for entering. And it's not having, it's not a five minutes, it's not a 10 minutes. So personally, I'm spending about 15 minutes per analysis in day trading. And I'm not a beginner. So if you're a beginner, you will take uh, even more time, maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes, okay? But besides analysis, day traders also need to control price performance to manage risks. And you think that's all? <laughs> no. Traders also need to be aware of all news about the economy, industry, and companies uh, with what they are trading, okay? So analysis, reading news, following price performance takes at least seven hours in front of the computer. It's like a real-time full job, okay? Uh, traders are sitting in front of their computers, doing analysis, reading news, controlling the market movement. So if you have a full-time job, it's not a really good variant for you. Unfortunately, it's sad, but yeah, it is true. <laughs> the next disadvantage is emotional resilience necessary. So managing emotions is extremely crucial for rational decision-making process. Why? Let me explain. Day traders are spending at least seven hours in front of computer and not just for one day, not just for two days, seven hours per day for five fucking days in a week, at least five. And if you have any problems in your real life, it will interfere with the process. Maybe you had a busy day uh, at your main job, okay? Like stressful day, or maybe you had a five, like, no, like, I don't know, argue or fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend, or just something negative is happening in your life. All you will do is think about negative things. And just concentrating for a couple of hours will not help you because don't forget that five days a week, you spend at least seven hours trading. And when you trade on emotions, you're not able to notice some details. It's not because you're a beginner. No, because we are humans, okay? Our brain works in such a way that emotions always take over the mind. So we cannot fully concentrate with emotions occupy a large part of our uh, can name, can see in consensus, okay? And this has a bad effect on the trading process. And same thing is working for po with positive emotions. Why? So, for example, you fall in love. You're waiting for a message from her or from him. You want to hear your boyfriend or girlfriend voice. Or maybe it's your mother's per per birthday, so you want to be a part of that holiday. And because of that positive emotions, you're starting to do analysis based on positive sentiment, which is really bad. So for instance, Morgan can give you really strong warnings that it will do reversal, but you're avoiding all that warnings because you are too positive. Okay. So in swing trading, you're spending just a couple of hours or days per week, not per day, per week. So you need to concentrate for a couple of hours and for all that other time, you can feel whatever you want. Fall in love, be stressful, whatever you want, okay? In day trading, you need to control yourself every single day for at least seven hours. And that's really hard. So strong mental control is required in day trading, even stronger than in scalping. And that's why it's a disadvantage because not everyone can control his emotions for such a long time, okay? That's it. The next disadvantage is common fake out and reversal movement. So yeah, against traders' predictions. 
So look, in day trading, we have a lot of fake outs and shake outs and a lot of also a lot of reversals against traders predictions. So let me show you a good example. I'm choosing one hour time frame that is yeah, between is too volatile. Uh yeah, I can choose for you maybe a forex forex smart cat. Uh, and I will show you good examples how all this stuff is working, okay? okay. Yeah, oh, that, that's NZT to USD. Maybe I can choose some so something really active like Euro to USD. Okay, give me just two seconds. All right, here we go. So yeah, I'm here. My apologies for that. So what you can see clearly. First of all, what is this? It's a clear resistance level. What is this? It's a fake out. First fake out. I just spent the one second to find that. The next one, here we go. What is this? It's a clear support zone. How to determine all this stuff, you already know, but in future lectures, I will uh, teach you as well. What is this? It's a fake out. It's a deep liquidity sweep. You will learn that also in future lectures. Here we go. Let's go next. Uh, same thing here. We have liquidity sweeps, a lot of fake outs. So I will not waste your time to show you a lot of examples. So you clearly understand that. So yeah, in day trading, we have a lot of fake outs and shake outs and also a lot of reversals against traders' predictions. So personally, for me, Fake outs and shake outs are not problems because I have my own system how to avoid them. And of course, I will share with you more, um, that system, okay? But even if you know that system, it will be hard for you from the first time to recognize fake out and avoid them. And you may ask me, why in day trading there are a lot of fake outs and reversal movements against predictions, uh, against our predictions? It is because of bad analysis. No, I will answer it just with three words. Market maker manipulations. You will learn that in that technically in our future lectures, and we'll understand who is the market maker and how he's manipulating the market. But not one hundred percent of fake outs are happening because of market maker manipulations. You need to also remember that in most of cases, yes, because of manipulations. But still, there are other external factors that can cause fake outs. So in scalping, fake outs are rare due to short time of holding. In day trading, it's more common due manipulations. In swing trading, fake outs are occurring really rarely. And in investing, you can't even see that. And you don't care about fake outs and shake outs. So yes, day trading is a bad style of trading if you're afraid of fake outs and shake outs. But one more time, don't worry. I will share with you my system and you can practice and avoid most fake outs and reversals against you. The next disadvantage is a level of complexity. So day trading is more difficult due to high tension, emotional control, fake outs, false analysis results, etc. But it's worth it because of the higher profits and opportunity to improve your skills. So look, in day trading, you're doing from two to five trades per day. And with correct analysis, you can gain huge profits each week more than $20,000. And also imagine doing day trading for six months, six months, seven hours per day, five days in week, sitting in front of that computer and practicing. It will develop your skills extremely. Yeah, it's harder, so yeah, but in my opinion, it's worth it. But by the way, it's a disadvantage because technically it's harder. Now let's talk about swing trading. So it's another third trading step. Swing trading involves holding positions for a couple of days to weeks, targeting larger general price movements across. So swing traders are not interested in inter internal or minor movements that you will understand in a uh, market structure lecture. So personally, I'm a swing trader. Why I choose swing trader, you will find out a little bit later, but so, as a swing trader, I'm always trading with external main movements, external downtrend, external uptrend. I'm not interested in internal movements, okay? I'm only interested in greater movements of general market. Here we go. So we're not interested in internal movements. So 
they are holding, swing traders are holding positions from a couple of days up to weeks. Okay, swing traders can open a position on the first week of March and close it on the third week of March, or they can hold positions for a couple of days or at least one trading day. And trading day in swing trading is 24 hours. In day trading, remember, it is from six to seven hours. So holding time for from 24 hours up to weeks, it can be one week, three, four, eight weeks, whatever you want, up to six months. If it's more than six months, then it's investing, not swing trading, okay? Next, swing traders are using from one hour to one day time frames. Then main analysis in most of cases are happening on one day time frame. And personally, I'm doing that on one day time frame here. Yeah. And kind of four hour, like this one, or one hour time frame, it is for determination of entry and exit points. So whenever I find a good reversal point for entry on one day time frame, I'm going on lower time frame on one hour to find earlier signal for entry to not wait while um on one day time frame. I can find that good opportunity. Here we go. So yeah. Uh, next, swing traders are doing from two to five trades per week or per session, but usually their session is one week. So that's it. Three main factors about swing trading. Now let's talk about advantages and disadvantages. The first advantage is that it requires less screen time, okay? So compared to day trading, swing traders are spending a couple of hours per week for analysis. Personally, I'm doing analysis and opening positions every Tuesday and usually closing them on Friday. Uh, of that or next two weeks, okay? And all this requires from me a couple of hours per week. So that's really great if you have a part-time job or you're in college, okay? The next advantage is that we have a high triple R. First of all, let's understand what is a triple R. So triple R stands for a risk reward radio. Risk, reward, radio. So one more time. First R is a risk. Second R is a reward. Third R is a radio. So risk, rewards, radio. Triple R is about how much you're risking to get profits. And when risk, rewards, radio uh, or triple R is higher, it means that traders, uh, trader is risking a lot to get big profits. But... You may ask me why it's a pro, like why it's an advantage if you're risking a lot. When traders are doing correct analysis, they are reducing risks. They are reducing first R. But at the same time, they are keeping high rewards, second R, okay? That's why it's a really good advantage in my opinion. The next advantage is that it can be traded on all markets. So remember I told you that scalping is not for all markets because of requirement of small spreads. Day trading technically allows you to trade on every market, but in effect, it will be harder because traders are spending seven hours per day, five days, uh, five days per week. And before starting to trade with financial instrument, traders, of course, need to understand the performance of the price of that financial instrument. But they don't have enough time because they are spending a lot. So swing trading technically allows to, uh, allows to trade on every market. And as the swing traders are spending just a couple of hours per week, they have enough time for learning new financial instruments, okay? The next advantage is a flexibility. So swing traders can combine it uh, with education, with sports, with work, whatever you want, because you are spending just a couple of hours per week. The next advantage is that it's uh, less stressful. So swing trading is not less stressful because traders are not spending seven hours per day or there is no high tension like in scalping. And easier to control emotions just for a couple of hours for analysis if you are not good in mental control. And that's why it's less stressful. The next advantage is big gains from one session. So per one trading session, swing traders can gain thousands of dollars. Why? Because they are doing trading with external movements on higher time frames and with general and external movements price is moving with wide ranges so let me show you a good example with any stock there in this situation it will be this one so here we go let's say this is our reversal point okay with that remind that price is going to do reversal so we entered on the level of 300 
and ninety dollars and could take profit order here based on this resistance level. So it is four hundred ninety. Oh no, ninety twenty nine. So four hundred twenty nine. Uh, yeah, minus three hundred ninety. So. Per one share, we're gaining about $39. And all this stuff is happening from the 1st of May up to 22 of May. So less than one month, about three weeks, okay? So if you're buying one share, you're gaining just in three weeks, $39. So imagine that, can you understand that in swing trading, no one is buying one share or 100 shares. In most of cases, we're kind of buying about 200, 300. Personally, I'm buying from 300 to 400 shares, okay? So $49 multiplied by 300 shares. So in three weeks, uh, I, I got $11,700. So huge gains from one trading station. Usually per week, I can just put in my pocket uh, about $20,000. So yes, it's good because my trading capital is really big. I'm trading uh, with, uh, with more than $100,000. My trading capital is, I will not say what is exact, but it's uh, significantly higher than 100 k So if you have a big trading capital, you can get incredibly huge profits per one week, okay? That's it. Uh, the next advantage is that Fake outs are less on higher time, less common on higher time frames. So in day trading, traders are facing a lot of fake outs and shake outs because they are using average or lower time frames. Yes, still fake outs uh, occur on higher time frame, but like they are not really common on higher time frame. Okay, you may ask me why I'm not showing you technically how fake out looks like on different time frames. Uh, am I aligned you or no? Look, because technically you can't understand it for now. With each lecture, you will understand more and more. And a little bit later, you will understand what I was talking about when I told you that on higher time frames, like one day time frame breakouts are less common. Just for now, just trust me. But in future lectures, I will technically explain you what is a fake out, shake out, how you can determine that. For now, I can't because you, you don't know basics. Okay, now let's talk about disadvantages. And the first disadvantage is that patience plays a big role. So look, in swing trading, uh, swing traders are holding positions for a couple of weeks or even a couple of, of months. And they need to wait days until the price will hit their, oh, their take profit level. <laughs> imagine, imagine you opened a position and for some irrational reasons, price goes against your predictions for the first week. Every single fucking day, you open a chart and see how price goes against you. He's playing uh, a, an endurance game with your nerves. But after that uh, reversal, price starts to the movement towards your prediction. So from this, we can understand that patience is playing an important role, okay? The next disadvantage is that swing trader tra trading requires momentum movements. On higher time frames, the consolidation is a really bad uh, for swing traders. Why? So yeah, let me find for you a good example. Here we go. Great example. Uh, let's say you opened a long position of trading uh, here. Okay, or maybe I don't know, like on this position. Yeah, you saw that this resistance level was broken, so you entered long positional trading here, or uh, maybe you entered here because this resistance was broken, price did pull back, pull back charge and did reversal, or in other words, respected that uh, key level. So you're entering for a month from here, okay? Based on this key level, you put the stop loss order on maybe, yeah, like here. And your take profit level, let's say it's about, uh, let me choose the Benetti retracement tool. Uh, about here. So yeah, your take profit, let's say, is on this level. Here we go. And let me delay it by the way, this thing. So yeah, next, the price is still rising a little bit after your entry. Okay. But after a couple of days, 
this, like a market is entering in, uh, into the consolidation period. So you can see here the market is consolidation between this level and this level. So here we have a consolidation. And you lost a lot of time before price did reversal and continued rising, okay, and hit your take profit. So let, let's count and calculate how much you lost. So you enter here, and it was on the 5th of the December, and consolidation ended on the 5th of January. So you lost about one month in consolidation. One month you lost to wait until the price will rise. So that's why swing trading requires only momentum movement, only uptrend like this, or only downtrend like this. No consolidation. You don't like to see consolidation or higher time frames. Yeah. The next disadvantage is overnight holding. So already I already told you about this that swing traders are keeping positions opened. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, when they are going to sleep or when they are out of trading process. At the night can happen negative events that can affect on the price performance. It can cause even gaps on stock market, which is another uh, disadvantage. So yeah, and that gap uh, or impulsive movement can hit your stop loss and you will be kicked out uh, from the market. So let's say example which Tesla, okay? you can see we have a lot of gaps here like the gap it is the empty distance between two price points you will learn this in future lectures don't worry so it's a gap an or gap okay i hope you understand what is a gap so yeah well let's say if you entered a long positional trading uh maybe from i don't know this level yeah from this level you entered for long because of this support zone all right, so where do you will put your stop loss? Your stop loss technically need to be on the level of previous support, and uh, you can add a 180-hour indicator and make it a little bit wider. But what you can see, this is your entry, and this is your stop loss. Waterfall. Now you're going to sleep at night. There are some negative events or market manipulations. You're sleeping. You can't control the risks, of course. At morning, you wake up and see this gap down. So in future, you will learn why gaps are chewing and how you can trade with them. But by the way, there's a gap down, which makes the price to go against you and hit your stop loss level. So as you can see, it's not a gradually falling. You can see that you're going sleep to sleep. You're awake at morning. You see, boom, price is significantly lower, hitting your stop loss. You're out of trade. It's falling a little bit. And only after that, it continues to rise. There we go. So that's what we call it, gaps. And yeah, uh, so overnight holding, it's a really high risk. And that's why it's a disadvantage. The next disadvantage is that in swing trading, traders are missing all short-term movements. It's bad in my opinion, because uh, kind of consolidation on higher time frame is a minor trend on lower time frame. But you are losing all that opportunities because you are trading uh, only with general movements on higher time frame. So let me bring for you a good example. Uh, yeah, by the way, let's, you know, come back to Microsoft. Here you can see this is our consolidation. Yeah, right. Let me, by the way, mark that. We're on one day time frame. Let's go and choose one over time frame. Now let's go back and find our mark zone. This is our mark zone. So now I'm zooming this. That was our external consolidation. What is this internally? It's a trend. Internally, it's uptrend, deep correction, uptrend, downtrend, breaking. So you can trade with this uptrend, with this downtrend, with this uptrend, downtrend. But no, you as a swing trader, you are losing all these opportunities because you are interested only uh, in external big movements. Okay. I hope you understand what I mean. Yeah, that's it. So that was the last disadvantage about swing trading. Now let's talk about positional trading and we're almost done for today. So positional trading or investing is about holding positions for weeks to months and even for years. So long-term traders are focusing only on main trends or and fundamentals rather than short-term price fluctuations. 
And positional traders usually are using from one day to one month time frame. But to be honest with you, long-term traders or investors are using charts really rarely. Because main analysis they are doing uh, is with documents and reports. But still, sometimes they can use charts with higher time frames to understand what is happening technically. Next. For long-term trading, holding time of positions is from one month to a year. So for investing, holding time is at least for six months to years. But for uh, long-term trading, it is from one month to a year. That's it. Next, long-term traders doing from two to five hertz trades per month or per year because they are gaining extremely high profits from each trade. And mostly their their whole entire capital is uh, in this two or three or even five trades and they can't do anything more. That's it. That was the general description. Now let's talk about advantages and disadvantages. The first advantage is that, uh, yeah, it requires even less time than swing trading. So investors are spending a couple of days, about 10 to 15, to do fundamental analysis. After that, they are holding positions for months. So 10 days, in at least six months, that's really a little time. The next advantage is that triple R is the highest. Yes, in investing, risk reward ratio is really high. So by doing analysis, <clears throat> investors are reducing risks, but keeping rewards high, higher than in swing trading. The next advantage is that it can be traded on all markets. You can do investing or positional trading with any financial instrument, crypto, contracts, stocks, currencies, commodity, whatever you want. That's it. Now let's talk about disadvantages. The first one is that patience plays even a big role. So if in swing trading, price goes against traders' predictions for a couple of weeks or days, in investing, it can go against predictions for a couple of months. So investors need to be really patient and calm. Next disadvantage is that it requires momentum movement as in swing trading. Same thing. So if price consolidates like here, it takes longer time to reach desired price level. That's why, as in swing trading, positional trading needs only upside or downside movement. The next disadvantage is that it requires fundamental analysis. So without fundamental analysis, traders are not able to enter the market. But why it's a disadvantage? Because to learn fundamental analysis, oh, yeah, you need to spend a lot of time. Like, first of all, you need to learn general economy. After that, you need to learn exact countries' economies, then learn industries. After that, learn exact companies' financial herd and market conditions. That's a lot of stuff for learning, and it requires a lot of time and high intelligence. That's why it's another disadvantage, in my opinion, because it's not for everyone. And the last disadvantage is lower win rates. So yes, still you can invest in popular financial instruments with high win rate, but they will bring small profits. But to gain big profits, you need to invest in risking less popular financial instruments, which win rate, which uh, win win rate is low. So that were like that was about positional trading. Now you know main four styles of trading. Let's quickly talk about main differences between them and we're almost done for today. So the main differences are scalability, strategies, profits, levels of risk, level of risk, and level of complexity. So like scalability. Scalping is not scalable because it uh, has strong requirements. Day trading is high scalable. Swing trading is medium scalable and investing is high scalable as well. Strategies. So for scalping, in most of cases, traders are using price action analysis and sometimes technical analysis. In day trading, technical and price action analysis. In swing trading, technical analysis, price action analysis, and quantitative analysis. In investing, only fundamental analysis. Profits. So profits from scalping are tiny. From day trading are big. From swing trading, they are huge. From investing, they are really huge, like the highest one. Level of risk. So in scalping, risks are low. In day trading, they are extremely high. In swing trading and investing, they are medium. And level of complexity. So for scalping, it's 8 out of 10. Day trading is 10 out of 10. Uh, my complexity. Okay, Swing trading is 6 out of 10. And investing is 10 out of 10. So the easiest one is swing trading. Now, how to choose? What is better? So selection depends on personal qualities like time constraints 
and capital availability. So day trading is suitable for people who want to develop strong analytical skills and are tolerant of high risks. If you are not afraid of risking and you want to learn and become a qualified trader, day trading is the best solution for you. Swing trading provides flexibility for those who balance between work and study. If you have a college, full-time or part-time job, swing trading is for you. Position trading or investing is a perfect for investors with big capital and potential outlook. If you have a small capital, let's say $1,000, investing is not really for you, in my opinion. If you have a big capital, capital <laughs> and the same time you're patient, you, you, you are patient, you can choose long-term trading or in other words, investing, okay? You have, if you have a big or average capital, but you are not patient, you can just swing or day trading. So remember that day trading allows you to make extremely big profits with tiny capital. Swing trading is doing that better, but it requires a patience. So it depends on your uh, qualities like time. Do you have a lot of time or you uh, you will have a desire to become a qualified trader? Swing trading. Your capital is tiny, swing trading. A big capital and you're patient, swing trading. Okay, so something like that. And finally, as I promised you, I will recommend you what to choose. So I'm recommending you day trading. Why? First of all, it is the best way to become a master in day trading, okay? For beginners, the most important thing is not to gain huge profits, is to become a qualified trader, and only after that, think about profits. So trading for eight hours per day, five days per week, for six to for four to six months, and you will become a pro trader. Not learning, only trading. Yeah, learning is important, but without practice, you're nothing. The next reason why I recommend you trading, day trading it's because of quick feedback and strong control over the market. So you can catch absolutely everything, news, updates, price performance, and that gives you high control over the situation. And the last reason is high profits with small capital. So with $1,000, you can easily make $5,000 per month as a beginner. As an intermediate and professional trader, you can make even ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 per month. So with small capital, it allows you to generate big profits. That's it. That's why I highly recommend you to choose a day trading as a beginner, okay? Only after getting some experience, you can switch to swing trading 